Hi and welcome to today's video where I will talk about scar tissue and what it feels like inside the vagina. I get this question a lot and I just want to start off by, by saying I am not an expert at all. The only scar tissue inside a vagina I have felt is my own. And that's in a way a limiting perspective. There are so many practitioners working with women, hands on, hands in, and I guess they would have a lot to say about how scar tissue can feel like inside the vagina. The good thing with experiencing in your own body what scar tissue feels like is that you will get to practice the sensation from both angles, both from your hand perspective and from the inside of your vagina perspective, which can give you a lot of clues. But it is a bit complex and I'm going to share in this video everything that I have learned on my own journey of healing prolapse and other pelvic floor dysfunctions. So the first thing I am going to do is to share a bit about my own story on how I came across this method of working with scar tissue to heal prolapse and after that I will really try to make it clear for you how scar tissue can feel like inside the vagina. And the reason I have decided to do this video, even though I am not an expert, is because I couldn't find any information myself out there. So even if there are experts out there, they don't share a lot of information about this. So at least this video will be a start. I do definitely recommend you to go to a scar tissue remediation practitioner if you have anyone in your area that could do hands-on, hands-in work, or you could find a physiotherapist that work with myofascial release, which would be quite similar. Okay, so my own story about scar tissue remediation is that when I was searching for any root cause to the prolapse that I was experiencing, I quite soon came across the work of Dr. Ellen Heed. And she's the founder of scar tissue remediation. And she just talked about scar tissue and the pelvic floor in a way that the first time for me made sense. What the doctors had said, what the physiotherapists had said, it didn't really appeal to me or I didn't really believe what they were talking about. And I just find it so interesting that none of the healthcare practitioners have talked about scar tissue even. And though I know that my vagina is very different from, you know, before giving birth and now, it's so much better now, of course, that I have worked with the scars and I am continuously working with the scars to heal them and to remedy them. It's a huge difference and it's like no midwife ever told me, you know, whoa, this is a big difference. Uh, I guess you are, you know, experiencing some kind of symptoms from this. It's just like everything looks normal. You go home and do your Kegels and that's the recipe you get. So I went online searching. It took a lot of energy, a lot of time, you know, having babies and um, my family to take care of and try to heal at the same time. When I finally started to read up on scar tissue remediation, I realized, okay, I, I need to face this area. I need to, you know, work internally in my vagina, in the pelvic floor and really be hands on with the root cause. And that frightened me so much. I didn't even want, even want to think about my vagina. I, you know, I did steaming, I did hypopressives, I did things, but it wasn't, you know, really coming close to the root. So when I realized, okay, I really need to face this, I, I tried a couple of times, but I just cried. Like when I, when I was going to find the scar tissue, I took 
my hand and my fingers inside the vagina and everything I was feeling was a big hole like and a very like bony structure it wasn't at all what it was before this mucus tissue fluid and very like when you press it it's kind of it's responsive to pressure and it's like yummy and <laughs> like it, like what mucus tissue should be it wasn't even close to that so I just cried for like 10 minutes uh, not daring to move my fingers not daring to do anything at all and just became more depressed after that so if you are in that situation I really really recommend you to find a practitioner and that's what I did I don't think you know I would have been able almost to move forward in my scar tissue work if it wasn't for um, this practitioner I found luckily who was in Sweden there are no scar tissue remediation practitioners in Sweden generally but she just happened to be here because of personal reasons so I booked a time uh, with her she came with the train two hours away um, which was just so amazing we did four sessions, which was about two hours long and a few weeks in between. So maybe over the period of two to three months, uh, I met her and she was not only doing the internal work, but also uh, on my stomach, in, in my like balancing my energies in the body and stuff like that. But that's a different story. What I learned from her was to understand more about my vagina as it was now. And she, even though, you know, it was super challenging when she said like, whoa, yeah, you are really wide. I was just like crying. <laughs> In a way, you know, when you, when you are the only person knowing it, it's, it's kind of, it's, it's horrible, but it's okay. But someone else telling you, that was just... You know I just cried so much and then she slowly started to tell me you know okay I, I can feel some scar tissue here what do you feel when I am touching it and most of the time for me I was numb I didn't feel pain I didn't feel you know any anything specific I could feel kind of her finger there but but nothing else but as we continued to work on the scars more and more emotions popped up i was still quite numb in the area but but after a few sessions i could connect it more to different situations of trauma in my life which was a good sign because then you know something in the nerves in the fascia something was shifting and connection was coming back so after the sessions with her, um, she actually went back to the States for a while. I had no other choice than continuing the work on my own. And then I realized I want to do it for a shorter period of time, but every week, at least every week. So then, you know, I started off with 10 minutes and uh, slowly increased it up to 30, 40 minutes. Um, Per week for me in the beginning it was really hard to understand what is the scar tissue but the thing is when you work with this type of pressure and connection in your vagina it doesn't really matter if you're on the scar tissue because even the tissues around the scar tissue will need that flow and that fluid to come back so don't feel stressed about finding the scar tissue, you know, in the beginning especially, because you are getting to know your vagina all over again, or maybe even for the first time. So many women have never even felt what the, a vagina felt like or her vagina felt like before giving birth. So you you just have to get to know your vagina from scratch as we continue to work with the scar tissue we will be able to identify where it feels more odd or where it feels uh, you know harder or number or pain um, there are so many emotional words connected to 
scar tissue. Since I have only experienced my own scar tissue, I decided I will not go for trying to cover all the different sensations you might have when when uh, coming across scar tissue with the fingers. So here we go into the more practical part of this video where I will try to explain what scar tissue feels like. What I have done is I bought this. This is slime. <laughs> it was the closest uh, to mucus tissue that I could come up with. So it's, you know, it's a bit too slimy, of course. It's like mucus tissue won't be stretchy like this, hopefully. Um, so, but, you know, when keeping it just in the jar and putting my finger like this, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it might be a bit too, like, grippy, but very similar in a way. And I think when I'm doing this that you can kind of feel in your finger how this feels like. And that's what I want to create an image in your brain of what it feels like when I am going now to add some things into here. So let's say this is a vagina with no scar tissue and it would just feel soft. Um, healthy, healthy mucus tissue will kind of, when you, when you press, put pressure on it, it will slowly press toward your finger back. Not like what the finger, how the finger is pressing, of course, it's a different type of like responding, but it doesn't, you know, move away and just disappear. Um, and it's not also like the, the plastic part, it's not just hard and like nothing happens. So if I take my finger into the middle here, it will be kind of like that, like a bit bouncy almost. Uh, again, I'm not going to try to cover all the words um, because it will be different for different people, both from the hand perspective and from the vaginal perspective and probably from a brain perspective as well. But I think most of you can relate to this sensation. Okay, so now I am going to add uh, a few things here to create some scar tissue in this vagina. First thing I am going to add is some grass. And this, it's uh, winter here in Sweden and uh, I could still find some grass underneath the snow. Uh, and it's kind of hard grass, it's not, um, you know, like summer grass, very soft and fluffy. It's more like a bit dry. So now I am going to add the grass here, trying to mix it up a bit and separate the grass a little bit so that it's not like a chunk of grass, it's more like spread out in the vagina. So when I'm feeling now, wow, it's super similar to scar tissue. It's like, I think you can imagine what like strings almost that goes and since since they are quite long at least for like a vagina you can almost follow them like in a half circle shape all the way and that's very similar at least for me how some parts of the scar tissue feel like so you know if you start to find scar tissue that is quite thin and you can then you can try to follow it and just see where it goes and this is mostly what I'm talking about is mostly scar tissue inside the vagina this is not the vulva it's not the perineum you know it's not anything that you might have been stitched when you gave birth uh, this is scar tissue inside the vagina and 87% of all women that have given birth vaginally, vaginally, sorry, has scar tissue inside the vagina. So definitely you want to work with all the scar that you might identify, but this is more to really um, make it more clear what the scar tissue feels inside the vagina. Okay, so now I have these kind of strings a little bit all over 
and it might be that you have that, it might be that you have like one string that you can find somewhere and then what I do when I work with those is um, I was quite numb so for me it felt really good to put a lot of pressure so I took a finger and I pressed and I kept on breathing and almost like when my finger was tired I stopped um, and then I moved on to the next part of that same scar tissue. So that's one way to do it. I know a lot of women have a lot of nerve pain connected to this and that they are you know walking around with pelvic pain in general and this might be super painful. So what I always recommend is to just start with any spot that is not super sensitive and you start to put pressure on that. It doesn't have to be a scar tissue. It can be outside like on the vulva part or it can be in the vaginal part. It doesn't really matter and you can spend five minutes per week in the beginning and then slowly you start to increase the area where you, where you work and if the body you know reacts with a lot of pain and you feel okay whoa this was too much then you just back off and you continue with whatever worked and it might be that you don't want to put pressure like I have been doing like quite a lot of pressure it might be that you want to be do more of a massage movement so you kind of move your finger okay I'm gonna do it here so you move your finger more like this with the castor oil um, so that the castor oil also really can reach inside the tissue okay so that was one type of scar tissue now I am going to add I went to the kids sandbox and picked up some sand so this this is just very small like it's not stones it's sand and I'm not gonna take all of it I'm just gonna show you now I'm just gonna add a little bit yeah like that and I'll try to mix it with the slime because usually it doesn't feel you know grainy it wouldn't be like this of course so I need to really get it into the slime to make it more realistic if, if this is realistic I hope you are getting some new perspectives on what scar tissue might feel like okay so now yeah now I can feel it is grainy but it's behind the slime like it's behind something and for me the first time when I was so super wide it it actually felt like I was pressing toward this hard part and only like a super thin cover of of the tissue was over like the sand um, and that was awful now for me it's it's more like I am taking my finger into the middle and then I can yeah here I found some sand and then it's it's more fluffy around the the sand so it's all about working with creating a reflexive pelvic floor so many people talk about you know creating a strong pelvic floor and that's why they do a lot of kegels but this is you know all the methods that I have been using and that we use in the no kegel system uh, also all the videos I share here it's all about like a, a reflexive pelvic, pelvic floor which will be able to respond to the daily activity that you are doing so you know if you have to lift something heavy if you need to run to the bathroom like your pelvic floor should be there to support you that's the purpose uh, you don't have to be a, you don't have to have a super strong pelvic floor necessarily just a, a pelvic floor that supports you okay so that was the more like grainy sensation um, and same thing you can press either for a long time and just breathe trying to acknowledge any emotions that comes up if you want to put on, on some nice music relaxing music if you want to light some candles you know whatever makes you feel 
safe. Also try to keep yourself warm, like be in the bed with a lot of pillows and covers. Um, and I talk more about the practical stuff in the other video where I guide more through scar tissue remediation and how to practice it. Okay, so that was a different type. Now we have two more types that I wanted to try to visualize. These are stones, small stones. So they are bigger than the sand and probably we won't have so much of these. So I am just going to add one. This was too big, I think. One, two, three, four maybe. By the end of the scar tissue that might feel more like grass, it might be a, a bit of a bump like this. So let me see now. I have never done this before, so I'm just gonna, you know, experiment. Yes, so these sunk in very fast, pretty well. And yeah, so they are, it's like small knots and for these ones, I would definitely try to press like a little harder if it's possible for some time. Otherwise, again, you can just massage it with the castor oil, organic castor oil, and just work a bit around the, the stones or the, the knot. Um, and then just see what comes up. Is it pain? Do you have any memories around it? Do you want to cry? Is it grief? Is it whatever comes up? You just try to stick with the emotion as you either press, press, sorry, or you massage. But the pressure is super important because that is what is going to get the fluid going in this area. So that was a different type of scar tissue. And now the last one, I found this. This is just a bit of different shape. It's something that I um, picked from a tree. And as you can see, it's quite edgy here and also on this side. So I'm, I am going to add a few of these here and then mixing it. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so this is, um, these are almost melting in better, but I can still sense something is there. It's not like the stones, it's not like the grains, it's not um, like the grass. It's more like they are there, but it's almost so that I could be able to think these are a part of the structure inside the vagina, if you know what I mean. So it's, they feel almost more natural because now I don't feel those, like the pointed part of it. They are on the, like flat on the side, uh, which was actually a very good symbol because those scar tissues are probably the hardest ones to find. Um, so yeah. Then, you know, same thing. Now I have a mix of a lot of scar tissue in here and I'm, I'm just gonna move my finger very slowly. Always, you know, cut your nails. These are probably too long. Cut your nails, wash your hands, prep everything as in the, the other video. Uh, have the castor oil there, make sure you're warm. And then, you know, you can always start to just massage outside of the in the vulva part and perineum and then slowly you start to just see by by the entrance you can stay you know here in the opening for quite some time and just you know feel around here try to identify any scar tissue and if you do you stay there and you can stay like spend three four five minutes here and then once you if you find scar tissue, you stay and work with it. If you don't find it and you feel, you know, this feels quite good, like normal mucus tissue, then you can take the finger a little further in and you just work all the way around there. So you slowly work your way toward the inside and then at some point you will feel your cervix 
um, and you will work around the cervix and you know also in, in on the top here you will have your pubic bone and you can take your fingers like how do I show it like if if the pubic bone is like this you can take your fingers and work here and press especially if you have a bladder prolapse this is an important part and same thing you can go with the thumb toward the anus and press here like down if your anus is here and the pubic bone is here you press like this and work all the way around here and you can also do it anally <laughs> if you're up for it and definitely if you have hemorrhoids you can use the castor oil both externally and internally and just go as far in as you can and then you know you can press from both sides into the rectal wall uh, vaginal wall like press from the inner side and press from the vaginal side so that's some more tips regarding scar tissue what it feels like and how you can identify and work with it in a slightly more detailed way I really hope that you had some of your questions answered. If not, please let me know in the comments and I will try to clarify everything I can do for you. Thank you.